प्रायोरिटी कि अगर पर्सन और डिसेबिलिटी को प्रायोरिटी पे देखा जाए कि व्हाट इज द नीड ऑन प्रायोरिटी बच्चा स्कूल पहुंचना चाहिए तो फॉर दैट स्कूल शुड बी एक्सेसिबल स्कूल शुड हैव द गेट दैट इज एक्सेसिबल टू फॉर चिल्ड्रन विद डिसेबिलिटीज चिल्ड्रन शुड नो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ गेट वी हैव as yasir special educator of zeba baba was telling us about the orientation and mobility mobility means when we give a training to child with disability who has some mobility issues who has vision disabilities who is not able to walk independently he has to know where my gate of the school is what kind of gate it is is it a tin gate is it a wooden gate is it a iron gate then we have to train him how he has to open this gate that is the first part of accessibility and mobility orientation orientation means the training of how you can go inside the building and when we have a child with blindness suppose tahzima or hafsa was here and with from gate we have to make ensure that they count the steps how many steps they have to walk every day to reach to the main building main building entrance then there should be a ramp and on the ramp they should know how many steps they have to uh, take and how they can reach to the main building entrance and from in the entrance they should know on the right hand side how many classes are there class number 1 or room number 1 is it a class is it a office is it washroom is it uh, a staff room he or she should know this from uh, in when she walks from room 1 to 2 how many steps she has to cross to 3 how many steps she has to cross and same on the left hand side the orientation speaks us you have to walk five uh, steps and you can reach your own class in that is class 1 or class 2 or class 5 or class 4 and when he or she reaches inside the class then the teacher should know the proper seating arrangement where a child has to be accommodated if he is a blind child never think that he uh, has no uh, vision power he has no sight then you will keep him at the back of the class always try to keep the child with visual disability near the window so that light is thrown on his eyes and every time when a blind person gets light on his Uh, eyes even though he is blind he his power of sensation gets activated with the help of light we always try to make blind person to sit in the black that is the most in professional or unprofessional way of seating arrangement for the children with blindness and then comes to the same way for the children with deafness we should have a tag on every classroom uh, door and it should be in uh, written in a proper way sometimes we write, write in italic and we write in different uh, uh, types of uh, this uh, we use the different versions of the writing never try to do that in simple language you should write just here in the, on the box it has been write as uh, male he female she and it is very helpful for a deaf child to recognize that this is the washroom and we should even write a washroom here because sometimes a deaf child doesn't know why he or she is written there now that they are coming out of the school they are uh, enjoying the outer atmosphere also otherwise they are mostly abandoned in the buildings who have to go what why what to do that is why you see lot of sign boards in your university campus you see the wall maps these are meant for the persons who are having hearing and speech disability so that they can know the campus map where i have to go either i have to take the right turn i have to take the left turn which uh, building uh, has been accommodated which subject or which department that is very important and when they come to these uh, buildings they should know in which room who is inside it even uh, they should know in the administrative building there is the director but there should be the name plate on that uh, director's room so that they can know, know that reis ahmed saab is the uh, this director of this uh, campus 
and thereafter they should know who the actually uh, if he or she is the student of Arabic or biotechnology, he should know who is the head of the department, who is the uh, faculty member, who teaches what uh, subject that should be written so that they know everything from the sign boards. Sign boards are very important for the hearing and speech disability uh, students so that they can know where they have to go and who is in the classroom or who is in the office. And name plate should be there so that they can know what is the name of the person because sometimes they uh, are the students and they don't, never know who is our teacher, who is our faculty member, who teaches us what. They uh, Even they can write but when they don't know they are shy about it, how to say someone, who is, uh, what is the name of this person. So name palettes have been that also. And in case of accessibility, we have uh, some students also here in the campus who are using their own personal vehicles because vehicles are mostly uh, a kind of luxury for the um, general people or the non-disabled persons. But for persons with disabilities, locomotor disabilities, it is a need. We cannot go without proper transport facility. Sometimes we see uh, a loaded bus, a loaded uh, metal or a loaded car, we uh, get inside. But for a person with disability who is using wheelchair, who is using crutches, he cannot go. He cannot take the risks. He cannot use the additional part of the uh, uh, vehicle. So he needs a uh, very dignified transport facility. That is why uh, social welfare department has been giving the uh, scooters, hand controlled vehicles, and those hand controlled vehicles should have a separate parking slot for them so that they feel secure about their vehicles. They keep kept them there. It is very important for us to take care of such a uh, very minor things but very important for the mobility of persons with disability. And then uh, when uh, there uh, to the visitors with disabilities, there should be a parking slot for the visitors with disabilities where they can park the car, where they can park their own vehicle and uh, keep their vehicle safe. Uh, when we talk about the rights of persons with disabilities act, acts are very important, legislations and policies are very important. Uh, the uh, first part is that laws are made to ensure that rights are protected. When we see the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act, we see the first uh, chapter that is the um, uh, that is uh, showing us what uh, thrust has been kept on, what is the uh, main priority areas, what are the main priority areas on which we have to work uh, so that persons with disabilities get easily included and accommodated in the society. And when we see the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act first chapter, it is equality and non-discrimination. Uh, we should give equality to the person with disabilities and we should never discriminate them that you are a disabled person, we cannot accommodate you in the classroom, uh, we have no training, so you cannot join us in the classroom, how can we give you the education, how can you learn, we have not to suspect or we have not to pose the questions that hurt the person with disabilities, that is equality and non-discrimination. We have a, another section in that chapter that is women and children with disabilities should enjoy equal rights so uh, that is how we have uh, taken the care of these children because women and children have the equal rights despite their disability they have to take part in every um, activity of the life so that they don't live the independent life as our teachers are telling that the main thrust on when we invest our time on the person with disability the main thrust should be how we can make a person with disability independent if he is dependent, then uh, you can know if if a brother takes every day a child with disability to the school. Sometimes his brother is ill and he is not able to take him to the school. Sometimes his brother is outside the home. He, is, he has gone to some relative's house. How he will wait that then it means the child is dependent and he has to uh, give up or bump the glasses because he's brother is not available. That is why we want the child to live an independent life. Uh, person with disability should not oblige to live in particular living arrangements and uh, services including personal assistance na necessary to support living with due regard to age and gender. Uh, what we do, we keep person with disabilities in home for disabled. 
we give them in uh, when they are old person with disabilities when they have no caretakers we uh, take them to the uh, old age homes that should not be the option the option should be only we should see if any relative is very uh, humble to this person we should at least uh, accommodate uh, him to that uh, family so that he is in a family setup he uh, doesn't feel any way segregated or excluded give access to a range in house residential and community support if there is no relative that at least somebody in the community should have some uh, started something uh, that should give a support to the person with disabilities that they are not taken out of the society services including personal assistance necessary support we should give them the personal assistance like uh, somebody a child with disability needs uh, help to go to the school and um, we can give orientation mobility but till then he gets independent he should be given the support from the uh, society the appropriate government should take measures to protect person with disabilities from all sort of abuse uh, violence exploitation and prevent the same um, uh, we should see if a person with disabilities is abused uh, sometimes we have girls with disabilities who are abused we have different of girls who are who were only 16 or 15 years old and they became pregnant because somebody in the neighborhood, somebody from the relative, uh, they abused them and they were exploited to a larger extent. The person with disability shall have um, equal protection and safety in situation of risk and armed conflict, humanitarian emergency and natural disasters. When we see uh, floods are coming, we, uh, we get displaced we displace person with disability too sometimes person with uh, children with disabilities or uh, person with mental uh, disabilities who are dependent on epileptic medicine psychiatric medicine they don't want to displace they don't want to come out of houses because they they have been living in one set of 20 years 30 years and now they don't want to uh, go outside the uh, house in risky situations but we have to take the measures that he should not be the victim of flood, he should not be the victim of fire, he should not be the victim of uh, the uh, volcano eruptions. Uh, therefore, we have to, government has to take care that whenever any sort of emergency situations come, sometimes there is curfew and a deaf person don't know what is happening outside. He comes outside, he should have a car and security persons should see that he is a deaf person, he is not having uh, knowledge about what is happening outside. These are the emergency situations, risky situations when we have to prevent the person with disabilities from the harm. And no child with disability should be separated from the uh, parents on the grounds of disability. Sometimes we have to do that because we don't have the school set up, we don't have the uh, rehabilitation centers, then we have to take the children to uh, outer spaces like we have to take them to the National Institute man's father counseling for the rehabilitation purposes so sometimes parents are not in a cushion of effort and we give them the uh, support there that is host of facility or something but don't try to segregate a child with disability from the home because of disability some parents sometimes feel that we have larger issues with the child and they want to segregate if they put it in the child home child care home uh, that is uh, a very gruesome act that should not happen Losses, it is not uh, permitted and uh, access to voting and um, the election commission of India and state election commissions should uh, uh, always uh, ensure that there are accessible uh, voting booths where the, we are casting vote a wheelchair user should also go and cast his vote a person with blindness should also go and uh, cast his vote it is the um, duty of the government to do that but sometimes we laugh at the person with disabilities up there he won't bar me now you see your vote from me it's a case i and it is his right he has to go he has to do that because uh, most of the times if uh, the politicians don't find us as a board bank they never think of us they don't put our names uh, or they don't put our issues in their manifestos they never talk to our, us they always think that when we have a kind of mobilization of people in the form of a political rally we should get the person with disabilities we should have a photography session we should give them wheelchairs we should have, give them hearing aids and have a photo session that is all but as for the act 
every person participating has a voting right. He can be a candidate. He can he has, he can get a mandate from political party, but only when we have given right education, when we have given him the proper uh, training, how he can be the uh, part and parcel in social processes. And uh, the law again says that uh, the appropriate government should ensure that persons with disabilities are not able to uh, access the right uh, uh, any court, tribunal, authority, commission, or any body having judicial or uh, judicial uh, proceedings or investigation in powers without discrimination on the basis of disability. Uh, that uh, every uh, uh, implementing agency should ensure that person with disabilities can go to the court, go to the police station, go to the uh, places where they can plead their own cases. There should go, that not be any barrier. They should have the legal capacity. Sometimes we see that properties are mental disabled persons are grabbed by their relatives. When the father and mother dies, there is a person with disability. Everyone is looking at his property. He has the property, but he is not able to. Some relative takes the um, forceful uh, ownership of that property. That should not happen. But the person with disability should have the legal capacity. Now the National Act, Trust Act has started uh, a process in every district that uh, there is a local level committee which in which the deputy commissioner is the chairperson of that committee and member from uh, uh, disability center is uh, there and a member from an NGO working on the disability rights is there and they uh, give the legal capacity to a person with disability whose property stands to be grabbed or who is the threat of that property grabbing. And when we talk of the Education. Uh, there is a good chapter on the education, the, and uh, chapter number four uh, is in the education. And uh, in that chapter, we are asked uh, to give the accessibility uh, to the schools, to the uh, educational setups, to the uh, coaching centers, to all the uh, centers where high level coachings are happening, like for competitive exams, and there should be the accessibility for that. To train the professionals and staff in support inclusive education at all levels of the school, uh, uh, we have the uh, the government has lot of funds for that. That uh, teachers should be uh, given capability workshops. They should be trained how to deal with the children with disabilities. To establish adequate number of teacher training in a instruction 